Previously, our protagonist is Salary Man, who is out for work, but he accidentally get hit by a stray bullet, which leads to his death. But he gets reincarnated to another world as a healer with some divine skills from God. Now the story continues, as we see a group of beast men adventure brought Lucille and a wounded girl in a hidden alleyway. Lucille tried to heal her with his spell, but unfortunately, it didn't work, even though it drained his energy. Bazin, one of the beast men, asked Lucille about his actions, and he apologized, explaining that it was his first time healing someone. Lucille felt very nervous, which made it difficult for him to imagine the spell in his mind. Nevertheless, he didn't give up. Despite struggling with concentration and failing the spell multiple times, he persevered. As the girl's condition worsened, Lucil focused even harder and attempted the spell once again, envisioning how a wound heals, just as he had practiced. Finally, the spell worked, and the girl was healed. Encouraged by this success, Lucil went on to heal two more injured individuals. Although he faced challenges in maintaining his concentration and had difficulty with the spell, he did his best. However, when Lucil approached the last injured person, he stumbled and fell. He was exhausted, having depleted all his energy. When he woke up, he found himself back in his room at the Healer's Guild. He felt regret for not being able to save the last person. Bazin thanked him for saving the others, but Lucil blamed himself for the failure. Determined to improve as a healer, he decided to gain experience at the Adventurous Guild, where he could also learn survival skills. Excited, Lucil entered the Adventurer's Guild and was amazed by its grandeur. Approaching the main desk, he expressed his interest in becoming an adventurer. To his surprise, the secretary turned around, revealing herself as a beautiful bunny girl. She warmly greeted Lucil and asked him to fill out a registration form, providing his name, race, and age. Additionally, he had to channel his blood or magic into a card. After completing the form, the bunny girl assessed Lucil's qualifications. Luckily, his martial arts skill made him eligible to become an adventurer without any problems. She then explained the adventurer contracts, where requests were fulfilled in exchange for compensation. The guild would retain 10% of the earnings to cover expenses. Curious about what would happen if he failed a request, Lucil inquired further. The bunny girl explained that penalties and additional fees would be imposed. She also mentioned that Lucil would start with the lowest adventurer rank, which was H. Intrigued, Lucil asked if there were any healing requests available. Surprisingly, the girl seemed confused. Lucil clarified that he was a healer and wondered if he could earn money by healing injured adventurers to cover his training fees. Although the girl didn't fully understand, Lucil requested her help in finding someone who could train him to improve his martial arts skill. However, she couldn't make the final decision and promised to return with an answer. Lucil remained hopeful, relying on his monster luck skill to assist him in this situation. After a few minutes, the adorable bunny girl returned with a formidable figure accompanying her. Lucil tried to stay calm, reminding himself of his intimidating boss from his past life. Introducing himself, Lucil explained his desire to train in combat and offered his healing services in exchange. The big guy found this arrangement unusual for a healer and questioned Lucil's lack of concern for money. Perplexed, Lucil clarified that he wanted to become strong enough to protect himself from weak monsters during his journey. After careful consideration, the big guy accepted Lucil's offer. Lucil would receive one silver coin per day for healing people, while his training fees would be deducted from his wage. Excitedly, Lucil agreed to the arrangement, with the job scheduled to begin in six days. The big guy instructed the bunny secretary, Nana, to take care of Lucil from that point onward. Nana greeted Lucil with a warm smile, causing envy among other adventurers nearby. Sensing the tension, the big guy dispersed them and introduced himself as Broth, the guild's chief instructor. He informed Lucil that he would be awaiting his arrival in six days, bidding farewell with a mischievous laugh. Returning to his room at the Healer's Guild, Lucil reflected on his situation. He recognized the importance of improving his magic recovery to maintain the trust of adventurers. Determined not to fail when healing others, Lucil resolved to dedicate all his energy to improvement over the next six days. Suddenly, Monica, a guild member, knocked on his door, delivering his dinner and congratulating him for finding a new goal. Lucil tells Monica that he wants to improve his skills before starting their journey together. Monica encourages him and says that if he reaches level 5 in Holy Magic Affinity before he turns 20, he will be considered talented. Lucil asks if he can level up once a year to reach that goal. Monica motivates him and offers a date as a reward if he succeeds. Lucil gets excited and wonders if she means a romantic date. This new motivation drives Lucil to dedicate the next six days to improving his magic. He stays in his room and puts in a lot of effort. On the sixth day, he goes downstairs to thank Kuraru, who helped him learn about magic and become a healer. Hiro, impressed by Lucil's progress, praises him for learning quickly and finding a job. She encourages him again and tells him to thank Lumina for her help if he sees her. Lucil says goodbye and goes to the Adventurer's Guild. When Lucil enters the guild, he feels people looking at him and talking about his presence. He meets another friendly secretary at the front desk who offers to help him. Although he thinks all the girls in this world are beautiful, he gets straight to the point. He introduces himself and explains that he wants training from Broth. 
The secretary points him to the stairs that lead to the underground training hall. Lucio follows her directions and finds himself in a large space. Broth, looking even scarier than before, greets Lucio. He is glad that Lucio didn't back out of their agreement. Broth tells Lucio that he will be the only one training there. Lucio thanks him for the opportunity, and Broth admires Lucio's determination. Broth's powerful presence intimidates Lucio, but he tries to stay calm and not run away. Broth tells him not to run away and asks him to start with some laps. Lucio realizes that Broth believes in hard work and the training environment reminds him of toxic workplaces from his previous life. Despite the tough training and criticism, Lucio starts to enjoy the process. He remembers being shot and unable to move in his previous life, so being able to run and move freely feels amazing to him. After some embarrassing moments, Lucio finally collapses on the floor. Broth is impressed to see a beginner passing out during warm-up exercises. After a short break, they continue the training. Meanwhile, other adventurers in the guild relax, and Nana takes a nap. Suddenly, they hear a scream. It turns out Broth was sitting on top of Lucio during stretching exercises. Broth explains that stretching improves flexibility and attack range, as well as helps with dodging enemies. Lucio realizes his mistake and thought Broth would have a more strict training approach. However, Broth's training focuses on practicality. After an intense stretching session, Broth challenges Lucio to land an attack on him. Lucil tries to kick, but Broth easily counters it, surprised by Lucil's weakness. Lucil admits that he is only at level 1 and explains that he wants to train despite his current abilities. Despite the surprise, Broth is impressed by Lucil's motivation. Lucil shares his aspiration to reach a level where he can face adventurers without fear. Broth agrees that it's a good goal and tells Lucil to give it his all. However, Lucil's attacks remain weak and slow. Broth charges forward and slaps Lucil's face. He motivates Lucil, saying that the real fight begins when he's tired. Broth suggests visualizing attacks to avoid sloppiness. Lucil remembers his martial arts classes in his previous life and tries to follow Broth's instruction, visualizing his strikes. He realizes that he needs to use his range effectively to land hits. Despite his efforts, Lucil is knocked down by Broth's counterattack. The training is overwhelming, and Lucil considers quitting. However, he is determined to survive in this new world, so he gets up and decides to keep going. Broth is impressed by Lucil's determination and smiles. Lucil sets another goal for himself. Someday, he will land a hit on Broth, even though Broth is at a much higher level. After an intense training session, Lucil is exhausted and lies on the floor. Broth praises him for his bravery and emphasizes that the most important thing in battle is to avoid getting hurt or dying. To achieve that, Lucil needs to learn how to move effectively. Broth advises Lucil to observe and learn first before practicing on him. He warns Lucil that without understanding what he's doing, he could end up hurt or dead. Lucil realizes that this approach is similar to learning from experience in his previous life as an office worker. To Lucil's surprise, Broth announces that the break is over and they will start the second round of training. Lucil is on the verge of passing out from exhaustion and wonders if he should use a healing spell to recover. But Broth tells him not to do it. Instead, Lucil will learn a skill that enhances his physical recovery. Broth says that natural healing is important for Lucil's body to adapt and become stronger. Broth advises Lucil to only use healing spells for severe injuries. Lucil understands and notices that they are the only ones training in the hall. Broth explains that there aren't many new adventurers and limited funds for training, so they rely on real battles to improve their skills. Lucil remembers the injured beastman he tried to heal a week ago and wonders if his healing skills can help them recover. He decides to save his mana for healing adventurers in need. Broth is impressed by Lucil's words and asks him to promise to heal anyone who needs it, regardless of their race. Suddenly, a group of injured adventurers appears in the training hall. One of them asks if Lucil will really heal them for free. The injured girl considers leaving, thinking it might be a scam. But Lucil rushes to them and asks about their injuries. As he checks the girl's wounds, he prepares to heal her. The girl can't believe that a healer is genuinely offering help. Lucil realizes the lack of trust in healers in this town. Lucil proceeds to heal the rest of the injured adventurers, while Broth mentions that Lucil will soon be busy healing more injured adventurers. Lucil reflects on his limited healing abilities and says that he can only use his healing skill eight times in a row. Broth thinks that's enough but advises Lucil to practice until he's almost out of energy so his body can adapt and become stronger. Lucille, the injured girl, decides to trust Lucil and expresses her surprise that their training hasn't started yet. She still hopes to see Lucille's progress. Lucille explains that he needs to train his martial arts skills first, then heal people to improve his holy magic affinity, and finally meditate to increase his magical and physical recovery. He realizes that staying close to Broth will bring excellent results. Meanwhile, Broth tells Lucille that he can live at the guild to make his training easier. He will have a room for free and three meals a day. Lucille finds it almost too good to be true and asks if there's a catch. Broth explains that he wants to keep Lucil available to heal inexperienced adventurers and increase their chances of survival. Lucil remembers the group he tried to heal a week ago and expresses his desire to save as many lives as possible. 
Broth is touched by Lucille's words and suggests that the world would be a better place with more healers like him. Lucille may not fully understand the meaning behind those words, but he feels that he can finally start a new life in this world. Is bring an end to our episode. If you enjoyed it then don't forget to like, share and subscribe our channel, Any Explainer.